Ah, university, a hub of academic enlightenment and intense focus. With the demands of balancing work, study, and whatever social life we have left over, it's no wonder students are tired. A nationwide survey recently revealed that Australians feel sleepy for half of the year. For us students, that basically equates to a year's worth of uni. So I wanted to find out more about the relationship between UCID students and sleep, because we all love sleeping, we all want more sleep, but we're walking contradictions when it comes to how much sleep we actually get. So if you can stay awake long enough to watch this video, you might just learn something that can help you sleep easier at night. Those quad lawns just out the front, they're fantastic. The fish are 24 hours zone. The, the atmosphere is really nice. You can go to uh, Manning middle floor, those couches are pretty big. No, I just go to sleep if I'm tired usually. We all know about our bad sleeping habits, but what does science have to say about sleep and students? The analogy that I like to use is a bank debt, which everyone can understand. And if you don't get enough sleep, essentially you're making withdrawals from the sleep bank and at some point you need to pay off that loan. I think that napping is an excellent strategy. Um, if you want to wake up from a nap and perform, it needs to be a power nap. It has to be kind of less than 30 minutes because you don't want to get into very deep sleep. Memory consolidation requires a period of sleep. And the research tells us that people who do pull all-nighters regularly during a semester end up with a slightly lower GPA than people who don't. So we all probably know that doing an all-nighter is not the best for us. However, sometimes it seems like a necessary ritual when it comes to degrees with big workloads. I spoke to two such suffering souls on how they manage enough sleep with their uni life. My sleeping habit changes depending on the workload. Sometimes I sleep at 12, sometimes I sleep at 9, it, it really depends on the workload. It's sort of up to you to have the maturity to decide how much work you're going to do. And people can create a lot of free time for themselves and people can absolutely be sort of up to their neck in work. I like to go home and take a nap, so maybe a one hour nap, or sometimes I sleep on the train and miss my stop. I'm addicted to caffeine. <laughs> So I'll drink two coffees in the morning and then I'll drink two coffees in the afternoon and I'll probably drink one in the evening. So once I was um, with the plastic surgery team at my hospital, everything was just about done. But then a patient came in having been attacked with a machete and so all his fingers were dangling off and he needed to go into theatres pretty quickly. Next thing I knew it was four o'clock in the morning, we finished and I was on an adrenaline high. But I got home and I slept through the entire next day. So it's clear that students value sleep just like anybody else. With universities in Australia and overseas setting up special sleeping areas and focusing more on the role of sleep in student health, it could perhaps be worthwhile fostering a similar culture here at UCID. I'll wake you up if they do.